Thanks, Senator Higginluther. Um, I'm going to wrap up. I guess the chair's not coming back. A um, couple of quick questions. Dr. Lewinsky, um, public health emergency. It expires July 15th. Do you intend to extend that? Uh, I am not the one who would extend it, actually. Thank you, Senator Burr. Um, it, that, that is for the secretary. But you'll make the recommendation, won't you? I think it'll be in all of HHS recommendation. Okay, well, let me just say, we've removed the mask requirements. We've eliminated testing requirements to re-enter the country. Um, Title 42 is a CDC decision, and you said in your response to a letter to me um, that you were lifting it because, and I'll, I'll, I'll refer to how you, I think, address Senator Marshall. You said we have, there, you said we have the tools, tests, and vaccinations Therefore, there's no longer a public health emergency. Yeah, I, I, I misspoke. We had the tools, tests, and vaccinations. Therefore, there is no longer public health reason to bar people from entering this country. Thank you. I appreciate your, the opportunity to correct that. But there's a public health emergency still. Um, I, I think the, the um, question of a public health emergency is a different question for then is there a public health reason to bar people from entering into the country. I'd like to make that distinction. Well, I, I, it's already in the record, uh, I think, what you wrote to me, uh, which I think basically said we don't have a public health concern. Um, let me ask you, what, what are you looking for to end the public health emergency? Um, maybe if I could defer the, that question to the ASPR, that might, uh, I think, as part of the HHS, that would be helpful. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Walensky. Thank you, Senator Burr. So the Secretary does have this authority, uh, and he did, uh, the Secretary declared it in January 2020, previous Secretary, um, and it's been extended multiple times. Uh, one of the commitments we've made in this administration is that we're going to give uh, states and local governments 60 days notice before we take it down. Um, in deciding whether to take it down, we're in daily communication with our clinicians, our scientists, the folks on the ground. What the public health emergency unlocks is uh, healthcare system flexibilities. It's something that CMS relies on um, significantly. It, it extends Medicaid coverage uh, for folks during times of an emergency. It extends telehealth coverage to those on Medicare. Um, and it allows uh, hospitals and uh, nursing homes and other healthcare facilities some flexibilities in responding um, to the situation at hand. So uh, we continue to be in touch to understand whether these are still necessary. And, uh, th and as uh, Dr. Walensky said, the department will uh, come together and make that decision or recommendation to the secretary uh, for him to decide. But uh, we will give 60 days notice before it comes down. So you, you, you've answered the question that I asked, which will, will it be extended? Yeah, it'll be extended because 60 days from now is past July 15th, right? So no notification has been made to the state, so it will be extended past there. I'll write the secretary and ask him what the criteria is to end the state of the emergency, uh, the public health emergency, excuse me. Uh, I would only point out that the guidance that we currently have going out does not suggest that there is a public health emergency. We're beginning to dismantle everything. I'm not sure it's for any reason other than the fact that everybody around the world is doing it uh, because we are 60 or 90 or 120 days behind them. Now, all of you just told Senator Smith that remote work hasn't hampered your agency's response efforts. Okay, FDA failed to identify a crisis with baby formula. CDC, uh, I think, failed to lead as it relates to monkeypox. Um, Secretary Becerra, at my, when I wrote him and asked him about HHS staffing and were they actually at work when, uh, were they actually working when not at the office, wouldn't provide me anything. Now, none of you seem to know how many people in your complex, and Tony, I leave NIH out of this because of the 
the unique nature of the work there. How many of you can tell me how many people aren't at work? Pilot programs, executive declarations. Um, that makes me wonder how you mother, measure whether people are actually working when at home. And then I come today. I always like to bring things back to the present because I have a tremendous amount of respect for all four of you. Some I've dealt with longer than others. Um, I supported where there was public acknowledgement of it. Everybody, Tony outdates me. He was here before I got here 28 years ago. Um, because I believed you had the capacity, the intelligence, the education, and the independence to serve in the role you're in. And for two of you, I asked when you were confirmed, would you provide me with all the questions I ask as a minority ranking member? The answer was yes. Now we come to today. This has been the most well-orchestrated event that I've seen in the 28 years that I've been here. And for most of you, you've been willing participants in it. Um, this was designed to pressure Republicans to open a checkbook, sign the check, and let the administration fill in the balance with no detail on how, when, for what um, that was being asked for. I've never in 28 years seen an attempt to get an outcome without answering questions. I leave today extremely disappointed that maybe my judgment's been flogged. But I will say this to each and every one of you. Um, nobody's worked harder on this issue, I think, on the Hill than I have. Nobody's gone to bat for emergency money with no strings attached than I have. But there is a point in time where my patience runs out, where the requirement I have for my constituents in North Carolina, my colleagues in the minority, which are 50, exactly what's in the majority, requires a degree of detail that you and this administration are not willing to share. Uh, I personally believe that if the federal government doesn't lead by forcing employees back to work. And Rob, Google's a hell of a lot different than the FDA. Google can pull it off. Um, but the federal government has to set the example for the rest of the country that it's time to leave your house. I hate to see what the health, what the health care cost is going to be to our country for mental health now on the adult side. Husbands and wives aren't used to spending all day together. Just like kids need the interaction of school. Um, folks, let's get back to running your agencies. Let's bring the employees back into the office. Let's answer the questions that every member of Congress has for you and not just the ones the administration wants to do. You serve in a uniquely special capacity. And when you address public health, it's not for some, it is for all. And I hope you will look at this dais and these members and realize there is no difference between one that sits on this side or that side. They're on this committee because they are passionate about the issues that we take up. I thank the chair for his indulgence. I thank the witnesses for their expertise and their willingness to be here today. Uh, I yield back.